Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy and all divine Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, with joy I welcome each and every one of us to this 30th day in our journey with the Lord through the powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary during this year's October devotion. We thank Reverend Father Santos Mario Ubebo for creating this opportunity in order to spread the word of God to the ends of the earth through this media. In a most special way, I thank him for extending his hand of invitation to me to reflect on this all-important and powerful team. We need the Blessed Virgin Mary. For many who doesn't know the word of Mother Mary, it may look as if we are kidding. But it might interest you to know that no family can exist without the role of a mother. Today we are talking about a lonely virgin that accepted to be the new Eve. Since there was a new Eve, definitely our Lord Jesus Christ who hung on the cross of Calvary remained the new Adam. Before we proceed, may we understand who Mother Mary is. Mary has always been a central figure in Christianity. One of the roles that Mary fulfills is a, is a mother that we see in early Christianity. She is a role model for mothers and remains our powerful intercessor before our Lord Christ. She also, also, also plays an important role throughout Christian history. With the greatest asset of reaching our Lord Jesus Christ. Since she is the Immaculate Conception, her will is perfectly confirmed to God's will. And when you put yourself in her hands, you give her all your prayers, all your actions and sacrifice, and you say, it is in your hand. Do with it what you want, of course. This doesn't mean that you don't know how to pray, but you are trying to rely on the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary. Remember, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin, betrayed to a man named Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, How favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb, womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house, over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Confer Luke 1 26 to 34. Mary is a central figure in the Catholic faith. And her life illustrates how our Almighty Father works in our lives. Thus, we need her as our mother. Mary came from a simple background and yet 
she was called by God to fulfill a very extraordinary role, that of becoming the mother of Jesus Christ. This role was not was no easy feat. During Mary's time, women did not have equal standing as men in society. When Jesus was born, King Herod ordered infants everywhere to be slaughtered, so Mary had to flee to Egypt to escape the massacre and save her child. What a sorrowful mother. Despite the hardship she had to go through, Mary became an instrument of faith and stayed committed in her role of bringing to life God's promised son. In our Catholic faith, we are taught the three core values of Mary. These were embodied by the Holy Mother in the way she lived her life as her children. We too should aspire to embrace these values in our own lives and in the way we treat others. Thus will help us to understand the need and the essence of our Mother Mary in our lives. One, the value of humility. Humility is one of the most fundamental values we should have as Christians. We can only receive Christ when we are humble and meek. Mary teaches us that pride and selfishness is something that we must avoid. She had an extraordinary role as the mother of God, and yet she remained humble in her ways and continued to serve the Lord with devotion. We pray that by the end of this October devotion, we must have acquired this virtue of humility. We live in a world that is self-obsessed and this makes us be self-centered in our decisions. We do things that make us happy even if it hurts others. Being humble is not always easy. The Marian value of humility teaches us to put others first. Consider the joy of others before yourself. Consider the good of others before yourself. If we start considering others, the world will be a better place for all of us to live. When we are humble, we let go of our selfish human ways and become in tune with the ways and will of God. Two, the value of simplicity. Mary lived her life in a very simplest way. Despite having found favor in the Lord, she accepted what was given to her with grace and humility. Our world puts a premium on material world. We become blinded by material pursuits, the latest gadgets, fancy cars, expensive vacations, flamboyant ceremonies. Why there is nothing wrong with enjoying these gifts per se? It is important to remember that being obsessed with these things can distract us from God. It makes us believe that true happiness can be found in the physical world rather than in the spiritual. Remember, here is not our home. We are heading somewhere. For us to realize the joy that lies ahead, we need our Blessed Mother Mary to guide us, to intercede for us. Being simple encourages us to trust more in God than trusting in ourselves and to use His divine standards as our yardstick for life rather than our own shallow and superficial standards. We are reminded within this period that this world is not our permanent abode and that eternity is waiting for us at the end of our earthly journey. Finally, when we live simply, we become closer to the people who are needy because we understand the plight. We learn to have God's heart for those people in need. By living simply, we realize that there is more to life than pursuing meaningless ambitions. Three, the value of charity. 
Charity is at the heart of everything that Mary did and part and must be part of her spirituality. Being a mother involves being charitable and deeply generous in one's actions. It is an art of sacrifice. In our Catholic religion, love and charity are often frequently interchanged and with good reasons. Since the value of charity is a kind of love, charity is a theological virtue that lets us love God above all things. Practicing all other Catholic virtues is animated and inspired by charity, and it is the value that binds everything together in perfect harmony. By being charitable, we exhibit all the fruits of the Spirit like joy, peace, and mercy. We receive more when we give. It is an act of sacrifice that nourishes our soul. As we continue to dwell on this theme, we need the Blessed Virgin. Mother Mary is always there to intercede for us. We remember what happened in the wedding at the wedding feast at Cana. With her powerful intercession, water will change into wine. In our world today, many have run out of wine. But if we can fly to the patronage of a blessed mother Mary, maybe you are suffering from one health challenges or the other. Maybe things are no longer going the way you want. Maybe you become an object of mockery wherever you are. There is absolutely nothing a blessed mother cannot do. Why not fly to her patronage. Why not solicit for her powerful intercession? Remember, Mother Mary is a beautiful example of how God can transform us from ordinary people to extraordinary ones. What are those things that you are finding very difficult? Pray that within this October devotion, that God, through the intercession of Blessed Mother Mary, will assist you. Remember, Saint John Paul II said that the rosary for him is among the most powerful prayers he has ever encountered. And Venerable Jeff Futanshan said that is a woman he loves so much, and that is Mother Mary who can always make things very easy for her children. Before we conclude this little reflection, may we meditatively pray with me this powerful prayer of our Blessed Mother Mary. Memorale, remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your aid, or sought your intercession, was left unended. Inspired with this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the world incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your clemency, hear and answer me. Beloved brothers and sisters, you have heard it all. When you fly to her protection or implore her aid or sought her powerful intercession, she can never, ever desert you. As we continue to journey in this October devotion, may we begin to have recourse to our Blessed Mother Mary, who remain our Mother Ever Virgin. May she continue to intercede for each and every one of us, especially our troubled world, especially those who are passing through terminal illness, that her powerful intercession will 
grant them enabling healing from the throne of the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, her Son. And may the blessings of God remain upon you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.